United States Army presents The Big Picture, an official report produced for the armed forces and the American people. Now to show you part of the big picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. Today on The Big Picture, we would like to show you two stories. The first one is directed to the parents and the young men themselves, who have yet to fulfill their military obligation. It's an interesting story, an entertaining vignette, and it has a message, a message that I am certain will directly interest many of our audience. The second story concerns a rather unusual museum, just outside the college town of Wheaton, Illinois. More about that later, however. Right now, let's look at the first story called, I Know Where I'm Going. table for a future general in his party? Well, who's the general? You lucky? No, sir, Mr. Appleyard. It's Dave. I'm planning to enter private industry in a couple weeks. Take the big booth. Yes, sir. Right this way. How's the prom? Oh, 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 oh. Age sure struck home. So? Yeah, it's pretty late at night for this sort of work, isn't it? Oh, I don't mind, Sam. Yeah, but Dave ought to be taking more care of his room. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I think boys nowadays are born with an allergy to neatness. He was in a rush today with a senior prom and graduation and all. He's been rushing every day of his life as far as this room is concerned. You know, Molly, when I was his age... When you were his age, Sam, you were even sloppier. Oh, yeah? Where'd you get that idea? Your mother gave it to me, free of charge. Uh -huh. Boy, did she give me some ideas about you. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't want to believe that stuff. You know how mothers exaggerate. You want to hear for yourself? Nope. <laughs> Are you worried about Dave? No. Oh, I don't know. He jumped around so much, you know, from hobby to hobby and interest to interest. Well, you think he won't settle down? Well, of course. Someday, I guess. You know how kids are. Well, Dave certainly made up his mind about going in the Army. Yeah, suddenly. Maybe a little bit too suddenly. You know, I wish I knew deep down inside if Dave was really happy about signing up and going in so soon after graduation. Well, you talked about it. Well, of course, at first. But lately, he hasn't had time enough to say, mm-hmm, or grunt once or twice on his way out to a party or a dance. Oh, come on, Sam. You said yourself it would probably do him a lot of good. Mm-hmm. And anyway, you had a kind of a ball in the Army, didn't you? My mother tell you that, too? No, I listen to you. Stories you tell, dear, when you get together with your old buddies. Mrs. You and my love, you've been listening at the wrong times. Now, let's have some coffee. It's time you learn the old-fashioned facts of Army life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I heard that Army food is just like Mother used to make. And that's why she stopped cooking. <laughs> oh, Lucky, I think you're mean. Oh, come on, Mary Jo. If Dave wants to hide himself away in the Army, that's his problem. We don't have to be so serious about it. Not tonight, anyway. Well, it's only for six months. And that's it? Yeah. Well, and the reserves. Right here in town, one night a week. Two-week summer camp, all with pay. Not for me, buddy boy. I'm not going to rush into anything like that. Well, you got to get it over with sometime. Sure, but if I'm going to rush anywhere, it's right out that door with my diploma, right smack into life. Man, I've been cooped up in a classroom since I was a kid. I want to breathe a little. You know you're a little nutty. You think so, huh? You'll be in the Army. You'll be in college. And me? I'll be where there are girls to choose from, and jobs to choose from, and girls, and money, well, and now, girls. Well, buddy boy, since you plan to be so uh, rich and popular, maybe you'd like to start living it up tonight. 
I think the man should treat us here, right? Right. Yes. Well, I'm flattered. Uh, that obviously means no, huh? Look, just give me a couple of months. And when old Dave comes home on his furlough, I promise I'll treat you all to a big splash. Okay? Great. Okay. Dave. Uh, Oh, hi, Dad. Ready to go to Grandma's to say goodbye? Mm-hmm. Everything will be here. Nothing will be changed, Dad. <laughs> Dad? Yeah? You think I'm doing the right thing going in the Army next week? Then you're all signed up. I know, but... Look, Dave, it's only for six months. Now, son, you made a choice, right? I guess. I think it's a pretty good one. And anyway, you've made your army bunk. And no matter how lumpy it seems, you've got to lie in it. <laughs> Dear Lucky, they've got something here called instant morning. Know what I mean? You go to bed at night, and an instant later, some guy comes around blowing a whistle, and it's morning. Every day. They have more mornings here than at home. We've got a crazy new beat here, Lucky. It's called left, right, left, right. Only me? I've got a few lefts left over. Sometimes I go one way, my feet go another. Some guys have even bigger problems, though. Now, as to the scenic beauties of a place, well, they really give you a chance to get to know every square inch of ground. David, me lad, the scenic beauties of the city are holding up very nicely. Haven't changed a bit. In fact, they improve day by day. Dear Mom, as you know by now, home was never like this. We've got a sergeant, and I don't know, he wouldn't make a very nice mother, believe me. Nothing like you. He comes around and tries to bounce a half dollar off your blanket. He keeps insisting that it should bounce to the ceiling, like in his old army days. But we keep telling him a half dollar doesn't go that far today. He also has eyes in his shoes and what you might call a sense of humor because there's really no other polite thing you can call it. Yeah, I guess those sergeants aren't too hard on a guy, Mrs. Hewitt. Well, they're certainly keeping him busy, but Dave doesn't seem to mind. Yeah, great. <laughs> it's awfully nice you working here, Lucky. Well, sure, but it's only temporary, Mrs. Hewitt. I didn't realize the old town was so big. A lot of places to go, but I'm looking them all over. Of course, Lucky, marching is not the only thing we do. The Army has a lot to tell you about, and they like to do it in the great outdoors. Nothing but time. Yes, sir, nothing but time.
know, Lucky? Believe it or not, you finally get to really feel part of something. You and the other guys, you get with the beat, you know? It's really kind of fun. So, kind of fun. Boy, Dad, you sure were right. They really keep you moving, even when you're lying down. Sometimes you get the feeling they're trying to get us to use up all the fresh air. Oh, yeah, Mr. Jewett. I just, you know, took this job for the fresh air. I think it's great, Lucky. Well, it's only temporary. I got an appointment finally, McCracken Industries, next week, for something permanent. I'm sorry. That's what I have to tell all the young fellows in your situation. No use beating around the bush. If your military obligation's still ahead of you, you create a problem for your employer. Suppose we start you here, teach you how to do your job. No sooner you're getting to be valuable to us, along comes the Army, off you go. Oh, only for six months, Mr. Wiley. Not if you're drafted, son. Two years. Then we have to start all over again. Training a replacement for you, right? Yes, sir. But I may not be drafted for quite a while. Maybe never. Things change all the time. Sure. And that's a chance you're free to take, as an individual. But a business can't operate that way. Can't indulge in wishful thinking. I'm sorry, son. But that's the way it is. Well, you're scheduled to enter the signal school at Fort Monmouth as soon as your basic is through. Sounds great, Sarge. I'm sorry, that course requires more math than you've had. But we'll find a good place for you. Well, Brad, your tests show a pretty good leaning towards mechanics. Now, I think we've got a spot for you over in transportation. Well, that sounds okay, Sarge. You know, I used to drive the tractor on my uncle's farm. Machine records? That's right, Dave. Results of your aptitude test lean that way. This fits exactly with your reserve unit commander's request that you receive advanced training in this field. <laughs> Never thought about it before, huh? <laughs> Never knew about it before. Well, as a matter of fact, Dave, the work is fairly new. Business machines. Oh, yeah. Now, the tests indicate that you have a feeling for numbers, details, paperwork. You did better than average in math. I like math. When you finish your advanced training, Dave, you'll be assigned to work with a machine records unit. Now, this, of course, will expose you to additional electronic data processing machines. Probably wind up learning how to operate one. Sound OK? <laughs> yeah. How about that? I know where... Hey, Mary Jo. Tomorrow we take off on our bivouac. And I, know I guess we won't be together much longer. After graduation, Barney's gonna shove off to specialist school. Radio. Sai is off to quartermaster school. Well, all of us have some special thing we're going into. Oh, yeah. The other night, we went to a dance at the service club. There were girls there, but Gee Mary Jo, somehow they were different. How does he mean they were different? Than you. Oh, how could they be different than... You're here, and those girls are there. That's the difference. You. Bivouac, huh? I wonder what that's like. Who knows? You know, Mom, you get a whole new perspective on night. And what happened the next morning, wow. Well, like the man said, before you know it, basic is over. And the time I spent in specialist school really taught me something. I was put to work in the finance office, getting some on-the-job training. Boy, what an eye-opener. All the work is done electronically. Those aptitude tests sure paid off. I tell you, they're putting round pegs like me in round holes nowadays. 
They don't forget, though, to keep us in practice for the parade on that big day. College now? Nope. I got a job in mind. You kidding? If you're looking for a decent job around here, you're gonna have a rough time. They aren't hiring our particular age group. Well, I'm gonna try. Where? McCracken Industries. McCrackens? McCrackens? That's right, Dad. I uh, had one or two people I wanted you to talk to. Well, I'd like to try McCrackens first. Any special reason? Well, yeah. It's a big operation, and it's gonna get even bigger. What makes you think that? Well, Mr. Wiley, you're supplying the Army with a lot of equipment. Data processing machines, tabulators. I saw a lot of it being used. Used a couple myself. And even more is being used in defense industries. Well, all industries. And McCracken products have a terrific reputation, so I... Okay, okay. Now, your active service is over. Yes, sir. Now it's the reserves. But uh, one night a week, right here in town, it doesn't interfere. Oh, I know, son, I know. In the reserves myself. Oh. Well, we are an expanding business, and I think maybe if you could come back tomorrow, um, I'd like to introduce you around, okay? <laughs> well. <laughs> you know, Dave, you're going to like the reserves. After all, none of us wants to be involved in a war, but military service is part of living today. The country has to stay strong. So it shows this way, about the easiest, least disruptive way there is. Yes, sir. You find a lot of your buddies at the plant here in the reserves. The meetings, you rub shoulders with quite a few people in town. I mean, now you're part of a vital, necessary community activity. National activity, Dave. You, a butcher, baker, a couple dozen executives, and, well, everybody. And it's got to be, that's all. It's important. Darned important. Charlie Rogers, the real estate man. Yeah, Mom, he's a sergeant in the reserves. So's Tim Riley from the plant. Hey, 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 let me. Well, I don't mind. the meeting? Mm, got a date with Mary Jo. But I won't be late. All right. Goodbye. Bye. See you later, Dad. Okay. Hey. Got a new man around the house, huh? You know something, Sam? What? I'm gonna miss that sloppy old boy. Just a little. Well, I'll have to go away to camp for two weeks every summer, but that's no problem. Won't even deduct it from my vacation time at McCracken's. You'll be able to come down to the beach? You think this wolf in wolf's clothing would skip the beach one summer? Huh. Hey, what are you gonna do? Stay here and work all summer? No, nah, this is only temporary, you know. Look, Llewellyn, how long are you gonna go on being a temporary human being? I'm working on something. And now listen to your old dad, will you? We're all liable for military service until we're 26, right? Yeah. Now, you can go on wandering around in circles until they come to get you. But this way, like me, you're over the big hurdle. Sure. That's why I'm working on something. Oh? Hey, you know, you promised me a big splash when I came back. Yeah. I'm sorry. Now you'll have to wait. For what? For exactly six months. Oh? Hey! Hey, you mean you signed up for the reserves? Yeah, I told you. This is only temporary. <laughs>
Departing from tradition is a new and dramatic museum, a memorial to the oldest infantry division in the Army, the famous 1st Division. Twenty-six miles west of Chicago, near Wheaton, Illinois, is the Contigny War Museum, named to commemorate the Battle of Contigny, France, the first World War I action in which American troops fought as a unit. Here, not only this battle, but the long history of the 1st Division, America's most decorated fighting unit, is brought alive in a unique and inspiring memorial. Like the memorials at Valley Forge and Gettysburg, this is a shrine for all Americans, calling to mind the struggles and great deeds that are part of the American heritage. There is an impulse in anyone who has served in the armed forces to recall the stirring events in which he has taken part and to share them, particularly with those who have just begun to study the past. To youngsters, history in which a parent has taken part is more than history. It is experience, rich and meaningful. Every modern to tell the story in a way that communicates not just the facts, but the mood of past events. A diorama presents the Battle of Contigny. obscure Picardy village, waiting for its role in American history on the morning of May 28, 1918. This is Cantini and the 1st Division, ready to launch the first American offensive of World War I. The battle is presented in exciting detail, with movement, lights and sound effects, through attack, counterattack to ultimate victory. Cantini, in Pershing's words, where the American success set an example for future American divisions and gave new hope to the Allied armies. Pictures and maps take the visitor through the highlights of one war to the beginning of another. In both, the first was an outstanding division. A museum that brings back the experience of great moments in the division's history. Setting out for an unknown shore, North Africa. Desert warfare that gave new hope, as in World War I, to the Allied cause. Fighting that left the first bloody but unbound. Then the attack upon Sicily. Pursuit up into the rocky hills. Towns such as Troina, taken at a price. England and training for a new attack. Preparation for one of the greatest battles of history. The museum describes this battle in another fascinating mobile display, the drama of D-Day. This is D-Day, June 6, 1944, on the English Channel coast of Norman, France. General Dwight D. Eisenhower has turned loose the mightiest armada of ships and men ever mounted in history to storm the fortified bastion of Hitler's Europe.
Now they are coming in, soldiers of the 1st Division, to attack this beach called Omaha, bloody Omaha, worst of the five invasion beaches. From Normandy Beach into the Hedgerow country, the sunken roads of France were death traps. and a breakthrough that began the sweep across France. Onward to a section of France where the Red One had distinguished itself in World War I. Cracking the Siegfried Line. Cleaning up in Aachen. Into the Hertgen Forest. Here the bloodiest of battles. The division slogan, no mission too difficult, no sacrifice too great, duty first. The first lived up to it at the Battle of the Bulge. At last the Rhine and into Germany. In a mock-up of a Nazi pillbox are the grim reminders of a ruthless enemy, once a powerful threat to freedom. Colonel Robert R. McCormick, editor and publisher. His estate has provided the funds for a museum, honoring a division that represents the finest traditions of the American Army.